and welcome to those of you who are worshiping by way of live stream. If you have a Christ candle at your home, we encourage you to get that and light it as we light the Christ candle here in the sanctuary. We light the Christ candle to remind us that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. Good morning. It's wonderful to see you this morning. Glad we can worship this day. And I am so thankful, honestly, personally, for the weather. It's been, it's amazing. I, for South Florida, this is incredible. Um, it's like another season has happened upon us. And uh, um, I, I pray that it will be here for a while. But uh, I know some people have different opinions, but I like the cold. Um, We are glad, though, that you're here. I hope that you've had a wonderful week, and if you haven't had a good week, I pray that this morning you can find the strength of God in your life through each other and the fellowship we have, the Holy Spirit is here, and that today you can go home encouraged and strengthened for the week ahead. Um, We do have several things that are going on in the life of the church, but first I wanted to welcome, I didn't know if we had any visitors with us this morning, we want to say hello to you, Um, but uh, if, and we also want to let you know uh, if if today is your first time with us, there are a few extra things that we don't normally do that are happening today, and we're going to be talking a little bit about stewardship, but you'll get a little a peek into the uh, life of our church, but want to know that you're welcome and, uh, and glad that you're here. I would love everyone for at the moment to take around, look around, and just wave at each other and say hello. If, and and uh, <laughs> I need to get a picture of that sometime. That's just, uh, it's fun. We do have some things that are coming up uh, and that I want to let you know about. One um, is that uh, um, on the 18th, November 18th at 6.30, we're doing a Thanksgiving service uh, um, with uh, Temple Beth Torah. It's the um, uh, over that way. (laughs) So... um, I'm not sure where I am right now. Yes, uh, um, but uh, we'll be with uh, Rabbi uh, Rosencrantz, uh, Rosencrantz and his uh, in the temple there. But Temple Beth Torah, it's our. Uh, we've had service uh, every um, uh, every year except for last year because of COVID. So we're looking forward. They're going to host us. Uh, um, I'll I'll bring the message. They'll bring some um, music. I believe along with us as well as they'll be providing refreshments and fellowship afterwards. So it's always a fun time. That's November 18th at 6:30. The other thing we want to let you know is that next week, there are how many services? One. One, And it is at 11 o'clock. That's right. And after the service, we're having a a luncheon. And uh, later in the service, we'll talk about our RSVP cards. Again, I want you to know the RSVP cards are for the luncheon, not the service. You do not need to RSVP to come to to worship. Um, This is just for the, uh, so we have enough meals prepared for everyone. So when we do pass this out, we're asking, um, even if you can't come, to let us know that you can't come, because we're going to be following with uh, phone calls and those we we don't hear from. Um, So unless you want a phone call. And we're just going to ask the same question we're asking you that's on the card. (laughs) Are you coming? And uh, so we would love to have uh, that um, uh, back from you, but we'll talk about that later in the service. I think that is all the announcements that I have, but I think Rachel has a, a few announcements. I have one announcement. I just want to remind all you women that Women of St. Peter's is resuming tomorrow, November the 8th, 6.30 p.m. You are welcome, and I hope that you will plan to be there. It will be a salad bar supper featuring items of the season, and we will also have an 
informal time of fellowship. So we encourage you to come and reconnect with people that you may not have seen for a while and also maybe to meet some new people. Our last Women of St. Peter's was March 9th, 2020, and that night we never would have guessed that it would have been this long before we had another one. Um, the planning team is excited to host this, and so the main thing we're asking is for your reservation. If you're planning on coming, please let me know. You can tell me after the service, or if you have your cell phone and you want to email me right now, that's fine as well. Um, since food is involved. It's just like the luncheon next Sunday. We need to know how many will be here. Thank you. This week is also uh, Veterans Day. It's this week, and we wanted to recognize our veterans this morning. But before we, we do that, I would like to show a, a, just a short video on, and, and thanks of our veterans. There is a call. Some hear it like a distant thunder. Some hear it like a whisper in the ear. Some just feel it in their hearts. A deep sense of responsibility to country, to service, to something bigger than themselves. We honor those who are willing to do what so few have done because of their sacrifice and service. Our country is a light on the hill that cannot be put out. Though many have tried, those who stand and protect it are heroes, worthy of our respect and admiration, worthy of every minute of attention we give to pause and recognize the hope, the sacrifice, the honor of all who have served our country. We live in tension as Christians who long for the day that the Prince of Peace will come back and make all things new and bring about peace in this world. We live in hope for a day when the military is no longer needed. But until that time, we have those in our country who in history were either drafted or in uh, recent times volunteered to serve in hopes for a better tomorrow. And this morning, we would like to honor those who have served in the armed forces and to pray for them uh, for hope and healing, comfort, and courage. And so if you are a veteran, we ask that you would stand as you're able this morning so we can recognize you. I ask you to remain standing for just a moment longer. I'm going to have someone else stand with, up with you. If you are a, um, a family member of a veteran and would like to stand for a veteran who's not able to be here today, if you would stand uh, with us too. And so we want to recognize you as well. I won't make you stand while we pray, but you, you may be seated and we're going to pray for you now. Oh God, we give you thanks for the land of our birth with all its liberties and opportunities to do good. And we offer you thanks for those who lead and who have offered themselves up in the service for good of the nation and the world. And for those who in all times and places have been true and brave and in the world, world's common ways have lived upright lives and ministered to their fellows. We thank you for those who have served their country in its hour of need and especially for those who have give, given even their lives in that service. And so, Almighty God, we remember these, your servants, with gratitude. We pray for their courage and strength. We ask that you would bring them comfort in times of difficulty and that you would surround them with your healing presence as they live out these days. We thank you for their service and we honor them. And God, we just pray your blessing upon these and their families this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you all now to stand with us this morning. And if you're new with us, one of the things we do here is we extend our hands as an act of prayer to be aware of the presence of God, and I'll guide us through uh, our prayer with you. Holy God, we thank you for your presence. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to see you today, to know your love, and share your love. Amen. 
one quick added note about the interfaith service, if I could. The new cantor at the temple comes to us from uh, the New England area and has her training and degree in vocal performance in opera. And I encouraged her to get a hold of Ryan and work up a duet. So now you really don't want to miss that service. <laughs> It'll be fantastic. Join me this morning's call to worship. The earth and all that is in it belongs to the Holy One. Look, Look here is our God, God for whom, whom we, we have waited. waited. This is the Holy One for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in our salvation. Who shall ascend the hill of the Holy One and who shall stand in his holy place? We come seeking the face of God. Let us join together in the opening hymn number 711 in your hymnal for all the saints, verses 1, 3, and 4. Would you remain standing for our affirmation of faith, which is number 889 in your hymnal, and it's from 1 Timothy. There is one God, and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all, to whom we testify. This saying is sure and full, full acceptance, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. We are ever looking for ways to grow in our faith, to realign, to reposition, to rediscover um, what God is doing in our lives, that we are called uh, and saved not just for ourselves, but to be transformed. And so we ask those three questions to, to look at our lives. God, who are you calling us to be? Where are you calling us to go? And what are you calling us to give? And the question is, do we take serious the answers that God gives us in these questions? to answer those deep questions in our life that make us call out to want to discover who it is that we are. 
And if we take that seriously, then we'll move out in action. And so that's the question that is ever present before us. It is stewardship of our lives, of our gifts, our service, our time. And so we are in the midst of our stewardship uh, a time of talking about that and different ways of what that looks like. And this morning to talk about that further, Ryan Thomas is going to share with us um, his thoughts and as well as uh, some more information about the event coming up next week. Well, good morning. My name is Ryan Thomas, and along with my wife, Sarah, and eight-year-old son, RJ, we have been members here at St. Peter's since 2018. We um, moved to Wellington from Washington, D.C. the year before in 2017. Um, we lived in D.C. for about 11 years and did go to church regularly, but we never felt a strong sense of community to our church in the district. So when we moved here to Florida, we were really desperate to find um, a welcoming, loving church. And we wanted a place that would really be a beacon of light in the community as well. Um, we kind of speed dated and church topped a little bit and came to St. Peter's one day. Um, and the congregation was welcoming, welcoming instantly. We got our cup for vi being a visitor. I'm sure some of you all got that as well. And we re remember meeting Jen and learning about the children's program since we had a young one. Um, so we continue to explore other church communities, but we always came back to St. Peter's, and it's been our home ever since. Um, ever since that day that we became members, St. Peter's has been such a blessing in our life. And it's really been eye-opening to see how it's impacted the community and others as well. For example, we recently volunteered in the pumpkin patch, and we had a young man, he was in his mid-30s. He came and said, oh, I've been coming to this pumpkin patch since I was a little kid. And now I live in Port St. Lucie, and I drove an hour just to come to our patch. That's how much he loves coming here and what St. Peter's meant to him. Um, I was a volunteer coach for Upward Basketball, and it was uh, really interesting to meet parents and children who've never been to church before. So to be able to introduce them to Christ and get them to come visit our church was really inspiring. My wife, Sarah, also volunteers for the Children's Choir, and it's the same thing. Um, they have kids that have never been to church that are now singing with Jen and up here performing on Christmas Eve. We see how the church supports cross ministries, our church in Cuba. There's just so many ways that St. Peter's impacts the community, this congregation, really the whole world. Um, when Sarah and I budget our money each month, we ask, well, is our money going to the right place? And every time we give to St. Peter's, the answer is undoubtedly yes. We see how the congregation, the community, how it impacts our family. St. Peter's is really a special place to us. So I know everyone's here for different reasons. Um, there's something in this church that's really calling to you. And everything that this church does obviously requires support. So when you sit there, whether it's Corey's um, great sermons, Rachel's small classes, the music that's unbelievable every Sunday, Jen and Shelley's children's program, there's so many ways that this church is impacting everyone. So I would just um, think about how you're involved in this congregation, what you're passionate about here, and reflect that during Consecration Sunday next week. Really reflect on that. I am really excited about the lunch. I know Corey alluded to that earlier. The food's gonna be amazing. Since it's catered, we do need to make sure that we have a good accounting of who is going to attend. Last Sunday, they came around and passed out reservation cards. So if you filled it out last Sunday, you don't need to do it again today. But we'll ask the ushers to come forward and distribute the Consecration Sunday reservation cards. We'll play some special music here, and we'll give you all a few minutes to complete your cards. Again, if you did it last Sunday, you don't need to do it today. But use this time to meditate and pray on the question, what percentage of my income is God calling me to give? Thanks very much, and we'll see you Sunday. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you.
And so we thank you so much for filling these out. And, and if you didn't f- finish yours, at, at the end of the service, you can give them to the, um, the usher or to myself on your walking out. Um, and uh, even if you're not coming, we need to know this. Again, it's RSVP for the luncheon, not worship. Um, we just not trying to get a count. So even if you're not coming, uh, give, hand that in to us too as well. And we just that um, helps us make our count and, and some of the work we have to do this week in preparation. But, so we want to just thank you. As we come to our time of prayer, we indeed have a lot to pray about. I'm thankful for the service of our veterans. Today being All Saints Day, as we remember those that have gone before us, as we enter our stewardship campaign, there is a lot that we need to seek God's guidance on. I want to invite you to join together in hymn number 723, Shall We Gather at the River? We're going to sing verses 1 and 2. This morning is um, All Saints Day, and and what we wanted to do is take a moment and be still, and if you have, um, hopefully you have your memorial bulletin, and this has names of people who have passed in our church since uh, 1978, and and it's good to look through there and, and pray for the families who have lost um, friends and family along the way. And also know that in Christ we will be resurrected and redeemed and live again. And so this morning what we're going to do is we're going to read through the names of those who have passed um, this past year. And we'll just take a moment. You'll hear a bell ring and, and just say a, a prayer for the um, the family. And so let's be still before God and uh, let us pray. Marie Carr Sanderson. Ruth Dull. Robert Sandon John Jones Carolyn Whitener Mary Roberts (laughs) 
Loretta Hooker. Sandra Leonard. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the saints who ever worshipped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, weathered wooden churches or crumbling cement meeting houses where your name was lifted and adored. We give you thanks, O oh God, for hands lifted in praise, manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands and those gnawed with age, holy hands used as wave offerings across the land. We thank you, God, for hardworking saints, whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, head-ragged or apron, blue-collared or three-piece suited, they left their mark on the earth for you, for us, for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, God, and may we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. Amen. I have sh several prayer requests to share with you. The first one came in this morning. It's um, regarding Max Navarro, who is in VPK, so just a little guy. Um, he, evidently, the family was on the way out the door to come to church, and he hit his mouth on the fire pit. And the note says he's okay, but it really hurt. Um, also, we have several people who are facing surgery. I got an email from Shirley Brott saying she's having an eye procedure. I believe it's, um, well, I'm not sure what it is, but it's this Tuesday. And then Debbie Lauda is leaving for the Mayo Clinic on uh, November 13th, and the surgery is November 16th and November 17th. This is a two-day procedure. And then Sharon Clark is having breast cancer surgery in December. And then I just got this prayer request um, in regards to Jim Sheldrake, our um, director of music ministries. His niece and goddaughter, Star Robinson, passed away on Friday. So we need to pray for Jim and his family. Would you join me in prayer? Holy and almighty God, today we remember the saints of the church. Those early Christians who shared the good news of Jesus Christ those who preached and taught in the midst of large crowds as well as those who met in small groups, those who left their homes in order to share the gospel with people in distant lands, those who wrote what we now know as the New Testament. We remember more recent saints, those children's division Sunday school teachers who planted seeds of faith in the hearts of many of us, those youth group volunteers who gave up their Sunday evenings so that awkward teenagers could be at church for fellowship and learning. Those adults who shared their skills, talents, and spiritual gifts so that other adults might grow in their walk with the Lord. Those men and women who lovingly served those in need, both in this country and around the world. Lord, we give thanks for all the saints of the church. Help us to learn from their examples of faith. We thank you, Lord, for hearing as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. may be seated. I want to read to you today from the book of Hebrews, and uh, later I'm going to read to you from uh, Philippians. But Hebrews writes this, <clears throat> keep your lives free of love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? I, I love a, a lot of this um, the scripture, and, uh, but I love the idea that, and the reality that God is always there with us, that God is always there with us. And we might need to hear that over and over, that God is always there with you, no matter the circumstances of the places that God is there. And the other scripture says that if God is for us, then who can be against us? That's right. If God is for us, who can be against us? And these are comforting words. They're empowering words. And, uh, uh, but have you ever asked yourself for what purposes? That God is there, that's great. The, the creator of all the universe is here, but for what purposes in my life does this um, matter? What, what is happening with me? Who is God making me to be? Who is God calling me to be? It goes in with those questions. Is it only for myself? So there's a question, is it only for ourselves? And the answer is no, no. I know we're, we're like, we think the answer is no, um, in church at least, but everywhere else we're told that the answer is yes, we live for ourselves. But Jesus says something different. Scripture tells us something different. One way we think we can bear the weight of the world when we live for ourselves, but we can't. We find it over and over again that living for ourselves just doesn't work. But when we live for something other than ourselves, we can find our life in God because if God is for us, who can be against us? So we are his children, but to take ownership of that kinship that we have with God, that God is with us, we actually have to live out that freedom that God gives us. In order for you to have freedom, you have to live out your freedom. And we want to do the things that God has called us to do, but too often we're drowning in the things that get in the way, the, way, the things that get in the way of us. And usually, a lot of times, it's ourself. Or things that we think will bring us salvation. And so in the middle of our drowning, that God throws us a rope and says, Here, take this rope. I'm going to pull you out of the muck and mire that you're in, out of the drowning situation that you're in. I'm going to throw you this rope, grab this rope, and let's get saved. And too often, this is our experience as Christians, is that we grab that rope and we say, Yes, we're saved. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ has forgiven my sins. I'm not going to hell anymore. I've got this rope. I'm saved. And instead of climbing up the rope, we just snuggle it a lot. We're just like, this is a nice rope as I swing at the end of my rope. So we've got salvation. Jesus Christ has saved us, but we've done nothing with it. We've forgotten to actually do something with our salvation, to climb toward our Savior. God has saved you, but for what purpose? The mission of God is to have us be reconciled with him and us to each other. Are we reconciled to God? Are we reconciled to one another? That's something we have to look at. We are called to love God and love one another. The purpose in seeking out God is that eventually we might have a profound love of God and a profound love of others. That's our mission. So the question is, where are we on that rope? Are we climbing up the rope? Are we simply snuggling a rope of salvation? Are you wondering what to do with the rope? And so we ask those three questions, God, you know, 
Who are you calling me to be? Where are you calling me to go? And what are you calling me to give? And the answers to those and engaging in seeking out the answers is a part of our, the nature of who we are. We're called to go, is there more in this life that we can be called toward? And so we're called to participate in the kingdom work of God. And that means we're called to love like Jesus, to be kind like Jesus, to be patient like Jesus, to give and be generous like Jesus. And if this sounds daunting, it is. And the reason it sounds daunting is because we think that we're living for ourselves, even though we know we're not to live for ourselves. Sort of the whole dilemma of what it is to be human and be a Christian and be called into something greater than what we are. But the good news is we don't have to be daunted. We can acknowledge this is a hard teaching. But Jesus says, I am with you. And if I am with you, what? Who can be? Not even yourself. Just think about that. You can't even be against you if God is with us. What's getting in our way? What is getting our way? One of the the big things that gets in our way are money and the things that money represents, our lack of it, our concern for it, our drive for it, our pursuing it. Uh, What pushes us all is in that is what we're invested in. That's one of the things is what are we investing in? Well, obviously, we're talking about stewardship now in the church right now. One of the things I was going to talk about in the sermon, the one sermon I had written out before this one was about contentment. And I was thinking about this idea of love of money, and I changed the idea, so I had to rewrite the sermon yesterday. And I'll do the contentment one later. It's a good one. Um, But I was thinking about this idea of love of money and the idea that God never leaves us. And so often our our pursuit of, of money, it isn't just about security. For some people, it is about security. So I'm not saying that money is wrong. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But what does it represent in our life? What are we investing in? If the idea that God never leaves us is my security in God or the dollar? Is my security in God or money? And maybe our problem in our walk in life is what we invest in. That we invest in a lot of things that we expect to be our salvation. That we think can bear the weight of our salvation. And the truth is, even each other... We can't, no one can bear the weight of salvation except Jesus Christ. No thing can bear the weight of our salvation except for Jesus Christ. And so we need to realign and relook at what we're invested in. Pay attention to where we spend the most amount of money. Pay pay attention to where we spend uh, the most amount of time. And I kind of like the the question that Ryan brings up. He says, is it worth what we're putting into it? I want to read to you from Philippians chapter 2. I think this is an NIV version. I can't remember which one I put in here. But chapter 2, Paul writes this. In your relationships with one another. So, okay, let's stop right there. I don't want to get too far into this. I want you to think about the relationships you have with each other. Okay, you've got some relationships in mind. The next sentence is, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. We're already in trouble, aren't we? (laughs) We're like, okay, I've thought about these relationships that I have with each other. Oh, I've got to have the same mindset of Jesus Christ in these relationships. And then we get the nature, and this is what I love about this part of of Scripture, the nature of, of God is shown to us. So God did not consider equality with God's, uh, who being in the very nature of Um, God, Jesus, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself to become obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Now, we're not done here because we have something important that comes right after this. But first, I want you to see the nature of God. So first, he says, think about your relationships. 
have the very same mind of Christ. Now let me tell you what the mind of Christ is. The mind of Christ is someone who is humble, who considers others before themselves, who is a servant. The creator of the universe became a servant. The creator of the universe became infinite, became something finite, and humbled himself on a cross, a place of shame, of brokenness, of fear, of pain, of torment, of betrayal. It says he will do that and still loves us. Consider your relationships, have the mind of Christ, humble yourselves like Christ. And then we have in verse 12 our favorite word, therefore, and if you see therefore, you have to ask what it's therefore. And I almost were bored with that. What is therefore? Okay, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fill his good purpose. So God has a good purpose to reconcile us all to himself and to one another. He calls us to have the mind of Christ in our relationships with one another. And that mind of Christ is one of humility, of considering others than ourselves, of laying down our stuff, our kingdoms, our pride, and then working out our salvation. That means that we're holding on to that rope. We've got to climb that rope. That doesn't mean we're earning our way into heaven, but we're giving effort of our salvation and that we can find and discover what it is that God has offered to us. I mean, this is good stuff. This is, God, how amazing countercultural Jesus is. And he calls us and says that we can have that life. We live out that life of salvation and freedom and hope, not by snuggling the rope, but by climbing it, working out our salvation, living it out, practicing it, rehearsing it, investing in the living way of God. Think about this, that our life here on earth is a rehearsal for heaven. So sometimes we think, I'll just wait around until I get to heaven. What a shock that will be. It's going to be a shock anyway, I imagine. But to go, wait, that's so different than how I was living? You mean now? As if our reward is heaven and peace, and then suddenly in heaven we live for other people other than ourself. Might as well get to work on it now. Now there's redemption and healing and wholeness. There's a lot of things that won't be working against us. I don't know what heaven's going to be like. I know that if you take your best day today, it's going to be better than that. So that's pretty good. But we're rehearsing heaven now, how we live, how we engage, how we love. And so how do we get there? How do we rehearse it? How do we work toward that? I want to show you something. I have something special here today, courtesy of Ryan Thomas. That's right. This, I'll pick it up. This is the World Series trophy. Huh? So, this is for when the Nationals won the World Series a few years ago. I just want to say this. That year the Nationals won, I only went to one baseball game in person. I think I only saw one baseball game that year. It was the Nationals. And uh, I think they played the Braves that night, and they won. And then they won the World Series. I only went to one baseball game this year. I only saw one game on TV. It was the Braves. <laughs> I think I should be paid. But this is, a, um, this is the Florida represent, um, representation for the Nationals. Ryan works for the, um, the Washington Nationals, and, uh, and down here is where their spring training is done. And, uh, um, and so he ha has this. He brought it. He was um, leading our uh, boys' basketball um, small group on a Wednesday night. He brought this in for one of their um, uh, lessons, and, and and uh, he, I was teaching over here, and he calls me over, and I saw it. I was like, ah, I got some pictures with it, and sent it to my friends and said, ha, and uh, just like Jesus would do. And, uh, um, but I'm just am amazed at what all this stands for, all the, the work and hard work that goes into it, that you, people, that these Major League Baseball teams get very singularly focused on what it is that they're called to do. There are 30 teams in uh, Major League Baseball teams. There are two divisions, 162 games. There are nine players on defense and uh, um, 
and there are 14 billion pitchers on each team, and, uh, but only one of these teams can win the World Series trophy at the end of the year. And it's very difficult to do. It's very difficult to have a repeat performance and, um, and rare um, that have back to, to back. And it's amazing what we can do. We just had the World Series. I don't know if anybody watched it. Anybody watch it this past? Um, and, uh, and so the Braves won it this year. And as I mentioned, it's amazing. Um, there's something that they were amazing to win. There's something even more amazing than, than Freddie Freeman's teeth. If you saw that on the, uh, that where, did anybody see Freddie Freeman see that? I don't know how you did not see, just Google it later. Um, and, uh, but as that halfway through the Braves season, it didn't look like they were going to make the playoffs, much less win the World Series. And they had an injuries in the outfield. They ended up getting rid of the entire outfield, uh, which is a, that's a, it's a major deal to get rid of your entire outfield and re, you, you're changing the, um, your team, you're changing the, the uh, relationships, the, the dynamics, the culture, all of that changes. And most people would say, oh, this must be a rebuilding year. Uh, Jags and Miami are very familiar with rebuilding years. That's all they do. And, uh, um, and so you think they're just going to lose, they're going to pack it in. But no, they had realigned where they were missing, where they were weak, and they changed it. They fixed it, and they ended up winning the World Series against um, the odds. They could have settled, they could have ignored, they could have waited, but instead they realigned, they refocused, and they recommitted to achieving and winning the pennant race. It's an incredible achievement. When we are aligned, what we can do, and the question is, where are we aligned with our soul's deepest longing? Are we aligned? Are we even paying attention? Most of our problem isn't that we're not willing, but it's that we're not paying attention. And if we can look and diagnose the issue in our life, we can begin to go, okay, this is where I can step in new alignment. Where are we aligned with the dream that God has for us? The reason Paul talks about keeping our lives free of the love of money isn't that, that money is bad, but money cannot bear the weight of our hope, our yearning, our salvation, our dreams. Money, time, talent are all tools we are given to align with the purposes of God. John Wesley, he was the founder of Methodism as we know it, and he says that you earn all you can, save all you can, and does anyone know the last one? Give all you can. It's an amazing thing that we can do when we start to live differently with what we have. Rich Mullins was a successful songwriter in the 80s and 90s. He died in 1997, um, but he was very concerned. He didn't want to be wealthy. He wanted to, to be like Jesus as much as possible, and he was always looking for ways to align himself with the poor. And his, he was having this conversation with his uncle, and his uncle said, you can't help the poor if you're poor. He says, why don't instead of just being uh, poor, make as much money as you can and give it away? Rich Mullins, when he died, he was probably worth um, anywhere between 6 and $10 million uh, um, from the, the music that he wrote, his net worth. But he didn't know that. He put up a board, and he said, pay me out of my money um, what the average uh, annual income of, uh, was that year. It was about $27,000. Making $6 million, living off of $27,000. And what he did with the rest of it, he had it set up for for missions and, and ministries and, and helping with, he was really passionate about uh, education on Navajo uh, uh, reservations and, and, and work there. And he was giving that, that money away for different foundations and different ministries like that. He realigned his life because he saw the need of his soul to participate with the work of Christ and how God was calling him. He shifted his priorities. He lived in a... Um, um, this is a man who wrote the song, Awesome God. Do you all know the song, Awesome God? He's the one that wrote that um, step by step. written, I mean, enough to make millions of dollars. Um, but he lived in uh, a one-bedroom apartment above someone's house. Um, he shifted his uh, priorities, loves, drives, and passions so that he would work out his salvation. We all have to figure out how we're doing that. I'm not saying be like rich. But I'm saying be like Christ. My own walk has been an interesting one. I'm constantly having to realign and rediscover and, and kind of re-understand what it means to follow Jesus. And there are days I think I'm doing great and I get a tap on the shoulder. Jesus is like, hey, let's, let's change here. You've made it here. Let's shift 
this way and go this way. Even in my own giving in my life, um, wasn't always consistent. Uh, I've been a Christian since I was 13 years old, and I had a few down years um, in there, but it had a real line there. And then as I became a pastor, I really started thinking about how do I give. And and uh, uh, when I first started out, it, uh, it was uh, it was struggle to make ends meet, but I realized I need to focus and change how I'm thinking about money. And so as I began to give the church, I worked my way up eventually to a 10% tithe and, and, and try to give to other places. And I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back, but it's just been a journey of mine to rethink where am I spending my money and my time and my gifts. And doing that, this is what I've always discovered. Whenever I've given in to the will of God and what he's called me to do, God will be calling you to do different things, but what he's called me to do, when I've given in to that, I've never been disappointed. I've been scared, a little frustrated, a little nervous, and it's not always been easy, but I've never been disappointed with the outcome. And the outcome isn't that I suddenly got a lot of stuff coming back, but just moving with the will of God is an incredible experience in discovering that. What about us? Where are our priorities and passions and focus? Do our words, actions, calendar, and checkbook align with the humility of Christ? What determines our value and status? Are we giving into the call of God and saying, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. As the scripture says, what can anyone do to me? Perhaps we will find ourselves with more than a pennant crown, but the crown of life, Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Holy Spirit working in us, being renewed, made whole, having the image of God flow through us. This morning, we're having communion, and uh, um, did, it, did everyone receive a, a communion cup? I hope you did. Uh, if you didn't, uh, John will bring you one. We're going to have communion in just a moment. But in order for us to realign, we have to diagnose the problem. And the big problem in our lives is we're all sinners. We're all messed up. And so let us begin with a confession. Would you pray this prayer of confession with me? Merciful God. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Jesus Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves his love for us. I'd like you to repeat this to me and to one another. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there are one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery and what you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite you to please stand and join us on our closing hymn, number 529 in your hymnal, How Firm a Foundation, verses 1, 2, and 5. As you go this day to climb the rope, we give kind of ways to doing that each week to work out our salvation, but to remember your bells, to bless, at least bless three people this week. Look for intentional ways to be kind, to say something nice, to do something nice for someone this week. Three ways to eat with someone this week. Eat and have conversations with people. See how God moves in those places. To be able to help discern God's word and, and voice, we need to pray. Listen to God at least one time a week. At least take some time to listen intentionally to Jesus speaking to you. 
and learn Jesus by reading Scripture. Read the Gospels. Discover who Jesus is. And remember, you're sent into this world to share the love of Christ. And so go with his peace and share the love of God with everyone you meet. Amen. Amen.